teachers of Reddit. What's the most bull thing you've ever had to teach your students? We've currently got a school-wide writing initiative that's a load of bulls. Each day starts with a 15-minute homeroom session that's supposed to be for students to make up assignments, get help from teachers, etc. Most students actually do a good job and use the time appropriately, but now we're having to devote entire homeroom periods to BS writing prompts, math questions, etc. The students don't take them seriously, it makes them less excited to get to school and start the day, and it's another thing on my plate that doesn't involve directly helping my students. We've also started spending tons of time on standardized test prep, which is a huge waste of time IMHO. Instead of teaching students to be self-reliant, and to figure out answers on their own, this test prep has taught our students to expect to be spoon-fed answers. I would absolutely fail high school if I was in it now. By the time I was a sophomore I could discern the bull's assignments from the real learning opportunities and generally just didn't do them. I did well enough with everything else to get A's and B's. I image with the sheer volume of bulls required these days I would just straight up fail out from refusing to do bulls. Once, years ago when I taught 7th and 8th grade science, we did a unit on Mendelian genetics. But the high school standards had been revised so that the concept of DNA was to be covered there. So the science coordinator of the district told me I had to teach genetics without ever mentioning DNA. I nodded and smiled and then taught them about DNA anyway. To be fair, Mendel came up with his theories of inheritance without knowledge of DNA. He managed alright. My school has instituted what's called a minimum F policy. When a student takes a test and fails, Regardless of what their actual grade was, the lowest grade I can give them is 50%. Which screws up the overall semester grade because these kids may have a C or D for most of the class just squeaking by, but fail the class because the final is the only test that does not have the minimum F. What the frick. All this does is teach kids they can do less than minimal work yet still get minimal credit. I hate to be a future boss to these kids. They will still expect pay keep a job even if they didn't meet the minimal work requirements. Former teacher here, I wasn't allowed to teach them what RNA is. Had to call it DNA instead. That'll be fun when they start secondary school. I had to teach an 8 step process improvement cycle. It was 8 steps of pure boredom. It was heck. So instead of road memorization I started having the students develop their own plan with their own ideas using the process. A few classes even brought these ideas to fruition. They got to see how the process worked by actually doing it. But I was told I couldn't continue to teach this way because it didn't follow the lesson plan. It's frustrating when you find a way to teach people that actively engages them and you can't do it because of politics. 9th grader. How to read. How I am the only teacher in his life that has noticed that he can't read, is beyond me. He acted out in class and wouldn't do his work. I work in an alternative school, but behaved well one on one. I taught elf at the time and not even his English teachers were questioning his ability to read. Just thought he was obnoxious and wouldn't do his work. It was frustrating. I've never had to teach someone to read before, especially a 15 year old. It was sad. I think the saddest part is that no one cared enough to notice. Short version here because of new policies implemented by my state, I have been forced to give tests to my students for the first time ever. I teach band. Who the heck gives a written test in band? You play the drums with A. Drumsticks B. A with emote C. Your face D. A football a little different. This was bulls not because I was required to teach something stupid by the curriculum, but more in a holy crap why am I having to explain this. The parents have utterly failed sort of way. I used to teach in a very wealthy private school in South Korea. The students were the children of diplomats, pop stars, doctors and lawyers, all sorts of extremely wealthy people. The kids were spoiled rotten. Often when it was time for my class they'd come running into the classroom and the first ones in would slam the door and hold it shut while the rest of them pushed and tried to get into the class. I'd have to break this up nearly every single class. On one occasion they came running into class as usual. I yelled at them to not do what I knew they were going to do. And once again they decided to ignore me. On this occasion, however, the kids outside slammed into the door and they actually bent the door off its hinges. I went off on them. 
Everybody sat and was writing lines as punishment. After a few minutes one little girl, who was one of the few well behaved and studious ones, raised her hand and asked, Teacher, do you have to pay for the door? No, I don't. Does the school pay for it? She asked. Yes, the school will have to pay for it and fix it, I explained. She sat for a minute thinking and then asked, Then why are you mad at us if somebody else has to pay for it? I stopped them writing lines and we had an entire lesson that day on respecting other people's property. It completely blew their minds. They had no concept of why they should respect things that don't belong to them because their parents were so rich that anything they broke or destroyed just got replaced without thought. To them if something gets broken by them they just got a new one. When I asked them how they'd feel if I walked into their house and drew on their TV with a sharpie, and then compared it to them coming into my room and drawing on the tables, you could just see their little brains explode as it clicked. I still can't believe I had to have that lesson. More victims of affluenza. Middle school teacher here. I'm always a bit confused why we have non-native English speakers. Hmong, Somali, Russian, ETC, learning how to speak English and then my school also puts them in a Spanish class. How about this? Wow. This L student from country X is doing great in ADV math. Let's put him in all advanced classes, including literature. When I taught conversational English in Japan, there was a small section in the students' textbooks on which we had to teach them how to speak like a native speaker. X. Wadaya. Kolja. That'll be okay. Etc. Being both a foreign language learner and teacher, you can't learn like that. And you can't teach like that. A native tone is a subtlety that shouldn't be directly taught until that student is at advanced level, has had enough practice, and is immersed enough into the socioculture of a language to be able to mimic native tone. Some students can do it without breaking a sweat, but for most students it's difficult and confusing. When I was in high school, not a native to English, but we started learning in second grade, our English teacher made us pick a regional accent. Then after we picked she said we had to stick with it in class throughout the three years. It was hilarious, as some people had gotten very creative with their choices. Every time we got to learning construction methods, I had to stop and teach high schoolers how to add and subtract fractions. Simple fractions that you'd find on a measuring tape. Nothing complicated. I wanted to line up all the math teachers and run down the line smacking them all on the mouth. Student. Not a teacher, but we all had to learn IT skills during my first year at university. The first lesson involved how to use a mouse and never got much more complicated. I'm paying for this crap. University applications in the UK are online. How do you think I got here if I can't move a mouse? My first year computer skills class basically taught us how to use Windows Vista. This was 4 years ago. That lasted long. I've had to stop teaching them fun and innovative side lessons, which I used to do in order to get them interested in a new unit, because there is no room for those lessons now. We have to teach to the test so that the kids can pass it, because that's all that matters to the world. Not how much my students retain, but how well they fill in the right bubbles on a standardized test. I had a Latin teacher that brought in a man from a credit union to teach us all about credit unions and how banks work. It had nothing to do with Latin, but he said it was important life knowledge. He was the coolest teacher too. Don't fight back. Now I'm a school principal I can set the rules and say this is bulls. If someone is hitting you, don't stand there like a victim and wait to be rescued. Stick up for yourself. Our teacher here. I have had to teach several middle schoolers how to use a ruler. Not only to measure, but to draw a straight line. They didn't get you had to hold it down. They just let the ruler slide on the paper making crazy lines. It happens every year. Now I do a special, how to use a ruler lesson. I also had to teach an 8th grader how to cut with scissors one time. And yes, I work with regular school children. Not special ed. Oh lastly, red and white equals pink. Blows their minds every time. Oh god. My 8th grade class got painting privileges taken away because they couldn't behave with paint. So we just drew and colored in crap. I had a junior in high school who had never used a key to open a lock before. She was feeling sick so I gave her the key to use the staff bathroom across the hall so she didn't have to walk to the student restroom. She came back I've never used a key before. 
I was dumbfounded. She says she gets into her house using a key code on her automatic garage door. Well this kind of thing sounds ridiculous for us but it's just what these kids are growing up with. It's like my very young cousin that asked me why the drawing on the phone application on the iPhone has a banana on it. Taught choir at a middle school before being reassigned to elementary school. Each week during our ensemble we were expected to teach from the experience workbook. Lessons like how to use your agenda, how to study for a test, making sure you eat a good breakfast, and my personal favorite of how to properly wash your hands. I used to teach 7th grade history. I was told by my administration that I was to disregard the black plague because although it might be interesting to learn about people dying and the disgusting conditions that it would not be on their benchmark tests for the district. I told the principal that the black plague was effectively one of the major causes to the end of medieval feudalism and she said that if it wasn't on the test then teaching it would be a wasted 60 minute class. This was one of many instances but this just gives a nice look into the ridiculousness of standardized tests. My 6th grade history teka had a cool black plague simulation with beans. If you drew a black bean you spread more black beans for a few turns and then died. Freaking fun. My first graders have to write a paper on what they want to be when they grow up. Pretty typical, oh, but wait. Also, what university they plan to go to, how high of a degree they're going to get, how much they want to make, and how they plan on paying for college. Oh oh I was pee. I don't think my first graders should be pressured to decide any of that now. I also don't believe they all need to be brainwashed that there is no other option than college. Our district still teaches the D.A.R.E. program, even though it's been proven to be one of the biggest failures in the school system. Two things that blow my mind, the officer having the 5th graders wear drunk goggles, they loved the effect, and worse, the time he told my students that if they attempt to get help for a friend who is unconscious, they will be arrested. Not to mention that the drunk goggles are inaccurate. The ones that I had to wear made us see rainbows and lines all over the dang place. Jesus Christ, it's alcohol not LSD. I'm an elementary school special ed teacher working with students with autism. For most of my students, it would be inappropriate to take the state tests for their grade level. So instead, I make a portfolio of their work to demonstrate their academic progress, then send it into the state for review. Makes sense so far. I'm required to put work in those portfolios that shows their progress toward the state learning standards for their grade. So, my 10 year old student has to be attempting a modified version of the 4th grade general education standards. The reason for this is that a child with a disability deserves access to general education curriculum and standards. Sounds reasonable, right? Except, my hypothetical 4th grade student might be working on counting up to 5. All the 4th grade math standards have something to do with fractions. My modified task for her portfolio has to have something to do with fractions. So all her hard work learning to count to 5 is irrelevant. So I end up creating a ridiculous fractions task. Like being able to sort fractions from whole numbers, that has nothing to do with a real and important math curriculum of counting. Then I spend a couple weeks teaching and practicing this non-useful skill so I can put grade level work in her portfolio. Sigh. What a waste of her time. And how silly to teach her from what she needs to know for her adult independence. How to count out enough money to take the city bus. To a weird theoretical concept she is almost certainly never going to fully grasp or need in her daily life. This is a hypothetical example for privacy reasons, but rest assured that all my students have to put up with this every year. My mother says, pre-civil war history in Ireland, it's just, monumental and boring, and they have to know all the names of the little people, and all the tiny events that led up to 1916. Oh, miserable. This isn't quite what you're asking for but I'll put this here anyways. In my high school the administration has adopted a new motto they are trying to force upon the student body. The motto is, change comes with compliance. That sounds like Animal Farm. I taught a remedial English class one year that basically taught kids how to find dead end jobs. It included lessons like always wear clean clothes to an interview and this is how you look through the help wanted at. The worksheets included unscrambling words to form those sentences. These kids were 18. God, that's just depressing. Just goes to show how broken some of the system is. 
I work in a nature center and we do a lot of school groups that come. Think of field trips. Every once in a while we'd have a home school group that were creationists. I hated doing this, but my boss would insist that we alter our language to take out any mention of evolution or adaptations. We instead had to say changes and take out any mention of the earth being any more than a few thousand years old. Imagine how difficult it is to explain fossils without talking about evolution or millions of years. I always felt like I was bullshitting those kids and teaching them the wrong thing just because their parents are freaking idiots who refuse to believe in science. These are fossils. We have no clue how they managed to appear as if they were older than the earth itself. Not a teacher, but a former parochial school student here. In biology we were taught evolution and creationism side by side. It was very strange because the school wanted us to be able to be prepared for secular colleges, but at the same time they were saying but don't take that crap too seriously. Everyone knows God created everything anyway. Not a school teacher but have to do teaching as part of my job. I've had to teach people how to use a mouse. You can tell them right click and they'll left click over and over again. You say, no, I need you to click the right button. They still click the left button. At times I have to have them watch me how to right click on something before they understand. I once learned during a support call with an elderly man how much right click and right click sound alike. I teach high school public speaking. I think it's bulls when the school thinks it's a great idea to put students in my class who are do not speak any English and b have it noted in their file that they are afraid to even speak English to their teachers. And then of course, the school expects me to keep the class progressing while I have to differentiate every single class for my Nepalese speakers, Italian speakers, Spanish speakers, and Chinese Mandarin speakers. Bulls. Times tables and fact families to 7th and 8th graders, and even the concepts of multiplication and division. I don't know how these students got to me with C's and D's in math before, because there is no way you can pass 4th 6th grade without having at least a rudimentary knowledge of multiplication and division. When a student has to sit and count on his fingers what 2 times 9 is, and he still gets it wrong because even his counting skills aren't that strong. Someone somewhere at some time utterly failed this kid. I have a lot of them. The English measurement system. Having to teach students who have never heard of pounds, ounces, feet, inches, yards, cups, pints, quarts and gallons. Just so they can convert to the metric system that they grew up with. Or the fact that the USA still even uses the imperial system. I'm a college biology teacher. I had to redo my syllabus to teach basic birth control and reproductive biology to upper class biology and pre-med majors. WTF. I've never had to teach anything I would consider bulls, but the educational bureaucracy in my state and the nation as a whole has been taken over by private for profit testing and evaluation companies like PARCC and NEASC who create one useless and invalid educational fad after another. Promoted by politicians every few years, this culture of standardization and the constant turnover at the administrative level makes us teachers jump through all of these hoops in order to keep our licensure. The government can legislate the crap out of us because we are public employees, but you can't legislate families where the real change in student achievement levels must begin. Therefore, depths of ed expect us to do completely useless things like post the state and common core standards on the board. Start each class with a warm-up activity, often unrelated and a waste of time, and submit a detailed plan book each week even though most good teachers don't ever actually use their plan book for anything except to keep the boss happy. Other than that, actual teaching is fun. My husband and I were living in Asia teaching English. His school insisted that he teach his elementary students about Easter. The lesson the school taught is that every Easter you look for the Easter Bunny. If the Easter Bunny doesn't come on Good Friday, Jesus dies on Easter Sunday. If you do spot the Bunny, Jesus survives. That was what the school had taught for years. When I was a student, my English teacher would encourage me to submit articles for the school magazine and write scripts for dramas. Mine would invariably be overlooked in favor of writing and scripts by other kids whose themes were abortion, suicide, adultery, poverty, etc. And seemed deep, taking a moral high ground that the teacher approved of. I always thought that was hugely unfair. What the heck does a 15 year old know about abortion? 
What does a privileged kid going to private school know about crippling poverty? And why would a child write about adultery or slipping into a life of alcoholism? I hated that formulaic writing I was expected to deliver as a kid. I'm a high school English teacher now, and I encourage my 13-16 year old students to write about themselves, their life, their problems, their concerns. I get some beautiful, and honest, writing from them. The themes that seem important to this generation are environmental problems, seeing the future of the earth as an apocalyptic landscape, violence at home in the street, terrorism, failing grades and classes, etc. At least no one is writing stilted blank verse about ripping a beating heart from their womb or whatever. TLDR. I was taught bullcrap in my own high school days that good writing was about infusing about morals and societal problems into essays. I am now a teacher who wants to give my kids a chance to think things through for themselves and not write about stuff they have little to no clue about. I teach computer science at a local community college. One of the classes they require students to take is a class on how to use Microsoft Word, PowerPoint and Access. By the time most students get to this level they've been writing term papers for several years from middle school onward. They've also given presentations. Yet, they are forced to take a class to learn how to format a paragraph or make a slide. IMHO. This class is nothing more than a way for the college to make money. When I teach it, I throw out the textbook and give them exercises on how to make a table of contents and include a bibliography. Stuff they might actually use. I also teach a bit of Excel. I understand that there are some students that need the basics. They would benefit from the class. But to make everyone take it is a waste and turn students off to the college experience. Not school. But I vividly remember in basic training being told that you would wash your butthole every day with a washcloth and soap. Not a teacher. But in my school we celebrate AIDS week and have an AIDS day where we are supposed to learn about AIDS in every class. I can understand an AIDS awareness week, but having to learn about AIDS in my calculus class is pretty freaking dumb. Oh god where to start? I suppose you just have to look at the standards for a few moments. Some include, students will think critically. This is so freaking vague it forces me to think critically about standards in general. Another is students will gain a love and appreciation for writing. For this one I found that beating them with a sack full of oranges util they love to write worked best. It is also always interesting to teach students how to use a computer. Most of them know how to use them better than 80% of their teachers. Most of my Minecraft skills come from lessons by my 10 year old students. Not sure if this exactly answers the question, but I've had to teach my students how to swirl a solution. Here's the situation. We are in the chemistry lab. They have mixed something in a beaker, basically just a cup, and need to swirl to mix the chemicals. They don't know how to swirl. I have GR12 university prep level students who are rocking the beaker from side to side, and have solution sloshing over the sides, and they just keep going. The proper technique is to have your fingers on the rim of the beaker, and move the bottom of the beaker in a circular motion. In a related issue, I've also had first year university chemistry students who don't understand the concept of a container being full. They overfilled the waste container numerous times. I mean, do they overfill the glass at home every time they pour themselves juice? I honestly don't know. Got asked by the school to preface teaching about evolution with but it's just a theory and teaching about the big bang with but we don't know who started the big bang. It could have been God. Hope you also explained the different uses of the word theory. I teach 5th grade. I have had to teach many students what vowels were. I have had to teach a student how to subtract. I have had to teach a few students what left and right was. I've had to teach a student what even and odd numbers were. I mean, the list goes on. It truly just makes me so sad that they have made it all the way to 5th grade without knowing these basic skills because they are too afraid to retain them. Almost all of my students are on a 3rd grade reading level and yet I have to teach them 5th grade material and they do not want me to modify it to their understanding, but instead teach it as is so they can be prepared for the state test. MLA formatting style. It's designed for humanities studies that don't rely on dates or time frames. But most of university students are majoring in sciences and need to use a format that highlights the time of sources from. 
Several years ago, I taught written comp classes focusing on current events. I had a student submit a paper on how women in Pakistan are not allowed to hold office, study at universities, etc. But at the time Benazir Bhutto was in power and I was flabbergasted, until I read the works cited page and saw that her main source was an article on Sharia from 1955. I only taught APA after that class. How to do a timed writing. How to time themselves. How to write for the test scorers. How to follow a specific formula to achieve the highest score possible. It's all bulls nonsense that doesn't actually teach them anything useful. But if I didn't do it, I'd lose my job. As a student, box and whisker plots have no purpose. And one teacher I had refused to teach it. Meaning our class was left out of knowing this completely useless concept. After reading these posts I have a much greater appreciation for those who teach on a daily basis. Certain teachers really do make a positive impact on a student's life. They will appreciate you and remember you for a long time to come. I adored my first grade teacher, went back to visit her up until I was in high school. Even worked with her one summer during summer school, that would be the last time I got to spend time with her. She passed away a few days before summer school ended. I forever will remember her and also the name Bright Star, she called her students. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.